Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. One of my favorite snacks ever are jalapeno poppers. You know, it's like the little jalapeno pepper that's hollowed out and it has like, you know, this unbelievable like cream cheesy cheesiness inside. Sometimes they're even wrapped in bacon and they're beyond delicious. And they're, they could be fun to make, but they're also kind of like a little bit of a hassle to make. So how about we kind of deconstruct the jalapeno popper and then turn everything that's awesome about it into a chicken dish. And of course, we're gonna keep the bacon aspect. Why not, right? So guys, we're about to go to the Instant Pot and create some serious transformative magic here. And we're gonna make the most creamy, flavorful, unbelievable bacon jalapeno popper chicken uh, you might, you've ever had. I mean, have you had it before? Well, if you haven't, you should definitely give this one a try. And it goes really, really well over rice too, for sure. The sauce is so abundant and plentiful and out of this world delicious, you're definitely gonna wanna drape it over some rice. So let's go right to the Instant Pot and start popping away. We're gonna begin with one medium-sized sweet or Vidalia onion, diced up. And the reason we're using a sweet onion for this is because, well, we want to balance out what we're about to slice up. And that's going to be five relatively large jalapeno peppers. It wouldn't be bacon jalapeno popper chicken if it didn't have these bad boys in there. So I'm going to take four of them and then I'm going to slice them all in half and then I'm going to pull out all the seeds and I also want to take the ribs out which are the hard white pieces inside. I just took a paring knife and I just sliced off any of the big thick ribs in there. And I'm going to put my magical snapping powers aside for a moment and show you exactly how you should chop these up. Simply cut it down the center like this. All right, you can cut the top off too. I could have done that in the beginning, which I didn't at the moment. Um, and from here, guys, when you touch this with bare hands, you can, I'm going to, but always wash your hands afterwards. It's going to put some spice on those fingers. They linger. So you can totally use some gloves right now if you want instead. Um, it's totally up to you, but just wash them afterwards. I want to take a paring knife now and just literally take out this hard white spot what has the seeds in it. That's called the rib. And I'm going to pull it out of there. And any other part of the rib that's still in there, you can simply just take the knife and just like cut it out, a paring knife. Get all the hard parts of the rib out. Be careful with your knife because we want to mostly just focus on the pepper itself. Get the seeds out of there and get that rib out. So that's how you want it to look. And then just repeat the process for all the halves, all right? So we want them to basically just be the green part of the pepper mostly and that's it. From there, I want to slice them up into thin strands. So we look like this when all said and done. All right, now let's take our fifth jalapeno pepper right here and focus on that. This one's just gonna be used for garnish when we serve. So all I wanna do is slice it up into some discs. And there we have it. We're gonna keep the ribs and the seeds intact on this one because it's just for garnish at the end. But those ribs and seeds really do add a lot of spice to it, a lot more than if they weren't in the pepper. All right, again, this is for later. Moving on. All right, we already have the jalapenos all set and now it's time to focus on the bacon element. Guys, I wanna take between 12 to 16 ounces, which is a pound worth of a thick cut bacon and wait, before I snap everything magically, shears are the best way to do this. Instead of just using a knife, it's so much easier to just snip it up with some shears. Give it a little bit of a bris. And there we go, so it's nice and sliced up into sort of dicey sized bits, just like that. All right, now move on to the chicken. All right, now I wanna take three pounds of some nice sized chicken bosoms, breasts, and slice them up long ways like so, about a quarter of an inch or so thick. And then when it's a really long piece, just cut that in half. And this is what we want all of our chicken to look like. So let's do the rest of that with this pile. And there we go, moving on. So now let's mosey on over to the Instant Pot and we're gonna add in two tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter. And now let's give our pot some heat. So now I'll come to the control panel on the Instant Pot. So I'll hit the saute button and make sure I'm on the more or the high setting, okay? And once our butter's melted and bubbling, we're gonna take our bacon and we're gonna toss it into the pot. And we're going to saute our bacon in all of that butter between eight to 10 minutes until our bacon borders somewhere between chewy and crispy. All right, so 10 minutes of sauteing, the bacon has gone by, and it's exactly how I want it, in between chewy and crispy. Great, and you'll see how much bacon grease it's released. That's awesome, we want that in the pot. All right, let's remove our bacon now with a slotted spoon. And then just make sure all the bacon grease kind of dribbles out, and then place it in a paper towel-lined bowl. 
All right, there we go. And as we let this rest, which we will for the time being, it's gonna crisp up even more. And now let's focus back on our pot. You'll see we have plenty of bacon grease in there and that's exactly what we want. Don't worry about how brown the bottom of the pot is right now. That's all gonna come up shortly because now we're gonna add in our jalapenos and our onion. And I'm gonna saute that in the pot. And as you begin to stir the onions and the jalapenos in the bacon grease, really scrape the bottom of the pot. The onions and the jalapeno are gonna release water as they begin to sweat. Uh, we wanna let these saute for about five minutes in the pot. And you'll see after about a minute of adding our onion and jalapeno, the bottom of the pot, all like the brown from the bacon, is gonna come up really easily. Let's make sure we get all that up by scraping the bottom with a wooden spatula, because we don't want the bottom to have anything caked onto it before we pressure cook, of course. All the water that the veggies release will help aid in that. So just after about two and a half minutes or so of sauteing, as I continue to scrape the bottom of the pot, any of the browning's gonna come up much more easily now. This is much better than it was before, and this is looking really good. This is how we want it to be. So you know, just within these five minutes of sauteing, just make sure that you gradually deglaze and get any of those brown bits up from the bottom of the pot. All right, and after about five minutes of sauteing our jalapenos and our onion, and getting the bottom of the pot nice and smooth, we're gonna add in three cloves or one tablespoon of garlic that's crushed minced or pressed. And then we're gonna just saute that for about another minute, continuing to deglaze the bottom of the pot. All right, and we're looking perfect. So now it comes time to add in our chicken, All right? And I just wanna stir my chicken around in the pot until it becomes, you know, just a very lightly seared, a pinkish white color is what I want. We're not fully cooking our chicken yet. That'll happen when we pressure cook. I just wanna give it a little bit of a sear on the edges. And we're gonna do this for about two to three minutes. Just toss the chicken up with the veggies. All right, and once our chicken has that nice pinkish white sear to it, we are good on the sauteing, about three minutes. Now I wanna add in one cup of chicken broth. And that's it guys, now we're ready to pressure cook. I'm gonna secure my lid, make sure that I'm in the sealing position. Now let's hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button depending on your model, and then hit the pressure cook or manual button depending on your model. And we wanna go guys for six minutes at high pressure. And now that we're done, we're gonna finish with a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so we're gonna take the lid off. And there's our chicken. Well, right now it doesn't look gorgeous just yet, but just you wait. This is about to become unbelievable with the finishing touches. Just like pretty much 90% I'd say of dishes that are pressure cooked. All right, I wanna add in some seasonings here. I wanna add in one teaspoon each of seasoned salt. I use Laurie's garlic powder, onion powder, and optionally uh, a teaspoon each of chili powder and dried cilantro. You don't have to add those if you don't want. And now I want to add in four cups or two eight ounce bags of a shredded cheese of your choice. And I want to add in two packages of Borsin. These are both 5.2 ounces each. It's like a spreadable herb cheese. If you can't find this, it's usually in the supermarket by the charcuterie or the fancy cheese section. Um, you can also use a brick of cream cheese. That's an eight ounce brick of cream cheese. And now we're gonna stir everything together in the pot until the borsin gets nice and melted in as well as the cheese. And by the way, since we're on the keep warm setting, which the pot automatically goes to by default after you're done pressure cooking, it's enough heat already going on in there for it to meld all the cheese together. Okay, that's looking good. Remember our bacon? I'm gonna add it back in and you can reserve some of it for garnish as well. I'm gonna stir that into the mix. All right, and now we're going to just let this rest for about three to five minutes until the sauce just thickens up a bit as it cools and comes together, and then we're gonna be ready to serve this up. Mm. So I'm gonna put some in a bowl here. Might get a little bit sloppy when I do it. All right, love it. Now, you might see some of these like straw-like pieces it almost looks like. That's just part of the pepper. It wilts into that, or portions of it do, and that's lovely. It gives it a really good texture. Looking delish. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna add in some final touches, and that's a few extra crumbles of bacon here if you want, go for it. And if you also wanna slice it off with a few extra pieces of jalapeno for some presentation and extra spice, by all means, feel free to go ahead and do that. And there we have it, guys. Some bacon jalapeno popper chicken. Cannot wait to try it, let's do it. And here it is, guys, my bacon jalapeno popper chicken. Oh, I cannot wait to try it out. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. Flu can transport us to the happiest of places. And right now, I'm in a very happy place. 
Wow, it's so good I can pop. The chicken is so tender. Mmm, the sauce. It's like everything you'd want in a jalapeno popper, but in a sauce. And the best part about this is it's not even spicy. I know a jalapeno is typically like a medium spiced pepper, but when we took all the ribs and the seeds out, they become very mild, especially when they're cooked in there. Just like an actual jalapeno popper typically is. They're not usually very spicy themselves. Um, if you have the garnish though with the seeds and the rib in there, it's definitely gonna add spice. Mmm, mmm. The bacon is such a nice touch to it as well. Adds rich flavor to the sauce and everything else going on. I wish I had rice. This is gonna go really well over rice, especially that sauce. It's gonna go wonderfully. I guess if I had my druthers of rice, I would probably go with like a Spanish rice or a yellow type of rice, but any will do just fine. Oh, the bacon combined with the chicken, combined with the cheesy, creamy sauce. It's food heaven. You know, I really need to have Richard try this out. Are you ready for Richard? Should I bring Richard back on? I know you want him. Yo, Richie! I don't know why I just called him that, I never do. And here he is, it's everyone's favorite guy. They like you so much more than they like me, I feel like, but that's okay, I, I would too. Uh, give it a try, Richard. Okay. It's bacon yeah. jalapeno popper chicken. Did I make it a little messy on the edges? You could eat it on the side of the plate. Oh, sorry. I could be a little <laughs> sloppy sometimes. All right, this looks really good. Sloppy seconds. I love all of these elements. Who would not that's love gonna be, yeah. jalapeno, chicken, cheese, bacon? Mmm. That good? Yeah. Chew, don't call, choke. I don't want that to happen. So how does it taste here? Does it actually taste like a jalapeno popper, but like in a sauce? Yeah, it does. It tastes exactly like you think it would. It's like, got that bacon flavor. It's got cheese. But it's not spicy. It's the, the thing that's like, no. the thing that's such a misconception about jalapeno poppers is that when you hear jalapeno, you think spicy, even though it's definitely like a mild medium pepper. I'm, let's call it a medium pepper to be fair, even though it's definitely a little bit less than that. But once, you know, it's stripped of its ribs and seeds, uh, it loses spice. However, you're, he's about to eat the garnish, which has the rib and the seeds in there. Yeah, see that. So that's gonna definitely be spicy. Much spicier compared to what is actually in there, which is a very mild dish. You enjoying that one? Yes. It would go really well over rice, like I mm -hmm. said, and unfortunately, I don't have rice right now. I totally, if I would be making this again, uh, which I will be, there'll be rice to go over. This is a good summer dish to eat with like fresh cut tomatoes. Mine aren't ready yet, but. Yeah, slice some tomatoes and put it in there too. Why not? If you want to put some tomatoes on the very top, there's no rules here. Use a <laughs> recipe as a blueprint. Thank you. I'm picking up. What a, all right, get out of here then. Get out of here. With his tip. With your tomatoes, with your baby tomatoes. Fun fact, I hate raw tomatoes. I can't eat them raw, but I can eat them pretty much any other way. And there you have it, guys. Bacon jalapeno popper chicken. So good. If you enjoyed these videos, check out PressureLawCooking.com. I have so many recipes there. Each and every one has step-by-step -step photos and a video. Speaking of which, if step-by-step -step recipes are your thing, you might want my cookbook, the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook. It's an international bestseller. Um, it has step-by-step -step photos for every single recipe, including a final hero shot of what every recipe should look like. So there's no guessing. Beautiful, over 750 beautiful, beautiful photos. Check it out online, the reviews don't lie. Uh, Facebook.com slash PressureLawCooking and like that page for any time an update comes out, a new recipe, deals on items, tips, things of that nature, and of course at PressureLawCooking or Pressure Luck Cooking on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, that's right. Uh, they all fly out of my head just like the little Tweety Bird does even though I never tweet. Thank you so much again guys, and remember the next time you have a hankering for a jalapeno popper, do it up differently and more excitingly and very, very easily and make some bacon jalapeno popper chicken. All right, so delicious, so tender, so bacony, so cheesy. And you don't even need a knife, you can just literally, it just melts a pot. Enjoy. Mm.